Okay. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Kieran Walker, and I'm a senior NSX SE from VMware, uh, aligned to our global accounts in Northern EMEA. Uh, Toofin have kindly invited VMware to speak over the next three days around NSX, and in particular, our integration with the Toofin product. When talking to, to customers, we have three main pillars of use cases that we talk to them about. We talk to them about security, which we'll focus on today, but also automation, so how we can speed up the delivery of workloads and applications to meet the, uh, the requirements of the line of business, but also about uh, application continuity, so being able to uh, deploy workloads independently of the physical location, whether that's on-prem or a hybrid cloud model or even into the public cloud. So today we're going to focus on the, the, free main, or the, the main use case around security. So hopefully everybody's heard about a zero trust uh, model for the data center, or in particular micro segmentation. And that's really around putting a security policy and a firewall around a virtual workload and using a policy based approach for securing those workloads. Okay, so you'll hear throughout this whole exhibition really around why breaches are, are occurring. And if you look at the traditional way of providing network security in the data center, it very much focuses on the perimeter-based approach. With the perimeter-based approach, it protects your north-south border and we have a lot of good vendors here that provide application layer context for that north-south border. But actually, once an attacker is inside the data center, there's typically little or no lateral controls to protect attackers moving from east-west within that data center. If you try and do that in a traditional way by using a physical-based approach, means that an extreme way you would have to put a physical firewall on the, the network segment for every uh, for every workload that's expensive but also from a policy based approach how do you scale that how do you apply a network security policy using a zone based or a physical based approach when you're mapping the security policy to the IP address of the workload particularly with the explosion of east-west traffic, if you're having those workloads move across the data center, how do you map that security policy to move with that dynamic nature of those workloads in the data center? So this is where we talk about the zero-based approach. So moving away from physical-based firewalls for east-west traffic, moving away from virtual firewalls, which with the traditional approach, the, the sort of uh, top right hand corner of the Magic Quadrant, the Fortinet checkpoints, Palo Altos of this world, brought out virtual editions of those firewalls. But the problem is, in the traditional way, the placement of those firewalls doesn't really meet the demand for east west traffic. So, with NSX, what we're doing is we're putting a micro segment around each virtual workload, which means that we can, when a workload is deployed, we can deploy a specific policy for that workload. If that workload is moved within the data center, the firewall policy and the firewall itself moves with that, with that workload. And if we then decide to tear down that workload, the firewall policy and the firewall also moves with it. So it means that we're creating an operational model of a VM for the data center, and making sure that we're not only deploying the, the network components, the network virtualization segment, but also the security policy as well. And really what's required is this new approach, the term software defined data center. So it's about abstracting those core infrastructure services from the underlying physical infrastructure. So we've already, already realized the benefits of compute virtualization for the last 10, 15 years or so. And actually we're starting to see that with uh, virtual, virtual SAM as well. But now with the adoption of NSX, we're able to abstract network and security services into the hypervisor, deploy those independently of the physical infrastructure underneath. So customers can deploy this over the top of their existing Cisco or Juniper-based fabric, for example, or they can then look to move to you know, a fabric architecture. They can make independent choices of what the underlying physical infrastructure is compared to how the network and security constructs are delivered on top. So really it's that software defined data center approach. When you then start to think about public cloud and how you secure those workloads as you move into the public cloud, 
or in a hybrid cloud model, then actually doing this in software starts to make sense. So what is NSX? NSX is about providing network and security in the hypervisor, so in that abstraction layer, independently of the underlying physical infrastructure. So we're able to provide load balancing, layer free routing, switching and firewall in the kernel, which means that we can deliver this at great scale and at great speed. And that hypervisor is absolutely key. We're not deploying these services in the, in the VMs themselves, in the guests. We're not deploying them in the physical infrastructure. We're deploying them in the hypervisor layer. So we, we talk about in the context of a, a Goldilocks zone, where it's not, it's not too hot or not too cold in terms of getting context of what the workload is, but also getting isolation in terms of providing that security policy. So if this particular workload was compromised, we can provide a security uh, policy and control within the hypervisor independently of the workload. So we can provide this in great in terms of great scale, in terms of throughput because we're doing this within the hypervisor. In terms of scale for applying rules, it's really about moving away from mapping rules to the IP address of the workload. It's about using other constructs to create a policy-based approach for, for your network security. So this is what we mean in terms of intelligent grouping. So we're actually now applying policy based on attributes within vCenter or using Active Directory attributes. So we can create policies based on whether a user is attached to an Active Directory group called Finance or Engineering. We can put grouping of security policies and, and micro segments based on the operating system type. So for example, in a compliance issue where we've got out-of-date operating systems, we can identify those operating systems within, uh, within the virtualization platform within vCenter, and then we can then put a security policy around those workloads based on whether it's a Windows 2003 server, Windows 2000, XP, whatever that may be. So we're able to intelligently group these objects within NSX and apply a policy-based approach for the security within the data center. And the key thing in terms of where automation comes into is that we can start to apply this repeatedly. So not having to make changes over and over again to our firewall policy, we can create our policies up front, we can have input from the security team, and then when we start to use automation, we can then start to repeatedly deploy that security policy consistently over and over again. So in terms of adaptable and proactive security, this is where our partner ecosystem comes into play. So we have a partner ecosystem that enables us to get application layer context, both not only from the guest, it's actually within the VM itself, but also at the network layer as well. So we can have an example where we have, say, Trend AV, that's doing uh, agentless AV within the hypervisor. It has an integration with NS NSX. So we can see, for example, if we see malware within the guest itself, the Trend uh, agentless AV product can then notify NSX to change the security policy of that particular workload. Now that security policy could be to take the, the VM out of service, or it could be to redirect or change the security policy to then um, give us application layer context for network security. So we can then redirect that to an IPS service to understand what's going on from a network traffic perspective. So that's what we mean in terms of adaptive and proactive security. Once our partners have cleaned up that particular malware, it can then change the security policy in NSX to put that uh, particular workload back into service. So that's how we can adapt to what's going on within the guest workload, but also provide that micro-segment and that policy-based approach. So this is our ecosystem. So we have a number of partners, and this list is growing all the time. We have uh, partners at the network level, for example, where we're able to 
provide physical to virtual bridging. So we're working with all of the top erect vendors to be able to um, enable workloads to migrate from physical to virtual, so from a VLAN to a VXLAN segment. But also if an application architecture enables you to, say for example, uh, a database server needs to remain physical but needs to have a layer to adjacency to an application server, then we can allow a physical to virtual bridge using our top of rack vendors. We then have our security partners where we have our checkpoint, file, uh, Fortinet, etc. where we're able to provide that level of integration to give us application context. But then we're also able to get operations and visibility to get control and understanding what's going on in the data center, but then also provide a policy-based approach across a number of, um, number of platforms and products within the data center. And then the other key thing is that we're able to integrate into OpenStack as well as our own um, automation platforms. So security, this advanced service insertion, so we're able to not only understand what's going on in the guest, so we've got this VM here on the, on the left hand side. We could have trend running in there so we could understand what's going on from a guest point of view, what application changes are being made. But also using our next generation firewall uh, integrations into Palo Alto, Checkpoint, Fortinet, we're able to insert a unique instance of this Palo Alto firewall onto the same hypervisor as the, the virtual workload. We're able to integrate into the centralized management system of, of Palo Alto. And it means that any rules and any policies that we create, any objects that we have within vCenter, Panorama Solution also has visibility of those, so they can move to a more policy-based approach for the virtual workload. And it means that when we have a VM that um, needs to have layer 7 visibility, we can then set up a policy that will then go through our stateful firewall at layer 2 to layer 4, then it can be then redirected to a layer seven next generation firewall, which is on the same hypervisor, the same host as that source VM. So in previous slides where I talked about having physical firewalls to do east-west traffic or having virtual firewalls to do east-west traffic, you've got to hairpin that traffic somewhere else in the data center in order to be allowed at layer seven. With our integration with our next generation application layer partners, we're inserting that application layer security posture as close to the workload as possible. So it means that if we don't want to allow layer seven traffic between uh, this VM and this VM, then we can then block that traffic at this source hypervisor rather than hairpinning it out to the, to the rest of the data center. So operations and visibility. So we have a number of partners that enable us to give us visibility and control within the data center, but also we're able with the integration of TFIN, it's been able to get this standard security policy framework and visibility across a number of platforms. The, the guys in Toothin here have a, a demo set up showing the integration of, of their platform with, with NSX and other security vendors. And we're working closely with them in terms of being able to get security policy visibility across NSX, which is a distributed firewall system across the, the data center. So with Toothin, we're able to pull in the NSX policies and rules into the Toothin platform. We're able to then, Toothin operators then able to create uh, policy violations to see if there's any changes being made in NSX, for example, as well as any other security uh, vendor that's integrated into Toothin. We're able to then see those those um, those violations and any changes. So, for example, if you had a PCI environment and you're using NSX to microsegment those workloads within that PCI environment, you can have two fin that sits above that that will then notify you of any violations to that overall PCI framework or security policy. We're able to also see uh, further down the line is the integration where not only are we pulling the rules into Toothin to understand whether there are any uh, security policy changes, but also 
in future releases of the Toofing product, you'll also be able to push down firewall changes into the NSX platform from a single pane of glass. So not only for other products that are managed by and have visibility through the Toofing platform, but also NSX will be have that uh, integration functionality moving forward. So in terms of NSX, absolutely it's about providing that network and security policy within a software defined data center the whole concept of nsx everywhere so being able to provide those three pillars automation security and application continuity across any public or private cloud deployment or hybrid cloud the security is about intelligently grouping the workloads based on policy constructs using vCenter attributes, moving away from that uh, network security model based on IP address. And then it's also about equipping the security team with the ability to automate and adapt to those changes within the data center. Thank you very much.